So this is a typical sluice. They vary slightly in design, but overall the same basic principles are at play. The point is, gold is heavy. We've said that before, but we can't say it enough. Gold is really, really, really heavy. So whenever it has a chance to, gold is going to drop faster than anything else in the creek. So when you have water running across here, you see this little ripple here. This is called a ripple. This is a upturned piece of metal that forces the water to go up. Well, when it goes up, there's a vacuum created right here. And then when the water goes up, it rolls around and gold tends to get sucked underneath that ripple. These are expanded metal. Now this is going to be a much smaller version of the exact same thing, where gold is going to get caught behind each one of these little ripples. So water flows across here and hits this bump. The water goes up and gold drops out underneath. And then it comes back down and it hits each one of these little riffles, this made of that expanded metal, and it drops in behind each one of these little corners. Then, underneath that, we have what's called miner's moss. And this is a rubberized piece of string that looks a lot like moss, and it forms together into a mat. When gold drops into that, it gets trapped. The currents are not enough to pull it back out of there again, and so it just continues to settle. Underneath the miner's moss, you'll have carpet. And that carpet is going to catch the even finer stuff that the miner's moss would otherwise let slowly work through. It drops down to the bottom and hits that carpet. Once it gets in the carpet, it really never comes out. And that's a good thing and a bad thing because, A, it traps the gold. That's the good thing. bad thing is, once it's trapped the gold, it's a pain to get it out, even in your own bucket when you want to clear it out at home. We'll come to that in a minute. For right now, that's the basic understanding of the sluice. This up here is the assay mat. What that does is it shows you a sample of what you're catching right now. So when you dump a handful of dirt right here that you think might have gold in it, this is a series of little U's or V's, depending on the type of sluice that you have. And it's going to trap the gold inside each one of these. Now, it's not going to trap all the gold, but it's going to trap a percentage of it, maybe 10 to 50 percent, depending on the type and shape of gold you have. So when you see up here that you have a little piece of gold, you say, wow, I've got gold. That means I've also got some gold down there. The more you see, the better the dirt you're working in. It gives you a real-time estimate of how much gold you're finding. It's not intended to catch most of your gold. It's just a sample. So, the hard thing about sluices, and the hard thing I had to learn, is how to set them up. You can find all sorts of answers on the internet, but most of them don't really tell you what you want to know, which is, just what angle do I want to have, and just what am I looking for to know when it's actually working right. Because you don't want to go too fast, because if you're going too fast, you'll lose gold. If you go too slow, it'll take you forever, and you won't have any dirt running through there, and so you'll simply lose gold because you're not processing up enough material in a day. So, Setting up a sluice can be easier and harder depending on where you're working. In a big, wide river without much drop, it's going to be really hard to run a sluice because you've got to have a little bit of drop for the water to come in and go down, otherwise it's not going to work at all. Whereas in a really small creek, usually they have a lot of drop really quickly, and so they're very easy to set a sluice up in, but they don't always have enough water to run it. So those are the things we're going to cover now. So the tricky thing about setting up a sluice is getting the angle right. The reason the angle is not just always one number like four inches for a four foot, is because sometimes the river is flowing faster than others. And therefore, the faster the river flows, the less slope you need. So right now, we just had a rain last night, and so we're having a pretty good flow through this river today. On other days, when it's really slow, where there's not much drop in a river, you're going to have a lot less push through the sluice. And that lack of push is going to mean you're not going to be circulating your gold and your dirt as much, and so it's not going to settle out as well. So here, we have already built a dam. Most rivers, you're going to have to have a dam in them unless you already have a natural one like a rapids. I'll show you that a little bit upriver while I usually use it up there. Right here, this is a lot of my tailings that I've used and over there. And that kind of slows the water down and channels it over here so it all focuses here. It also raises the water level there about four or five inches from what it is down below the dam. And both of those things are necessary to use the sluice in most environments unless you're actually working in a creek where you're just going to go downstream and you have a lot of drop. So here, we've already made our dam. We're we'll going to set the sluice in here. Now we're going to build up our rocks around it. If you have plenty of flow, you don't need to be obsessive about this. You just kind of want to avoid major disturbances around the outside that are going to make eddies in here because those will mess up the way the gold is sorted as well. So you don't want to bury your sluice. You don't want to have the water all the way up to here, either on the top end or the bottom end. You want to have about an inch on top of your grating or you can kind of go along the line of the grating you have down here, this piece of metal. Sometimes going on top of that, a little bit above that is about right. Because if you have too much water in here, it won't evacuate enough. And if you don't have enough water in here, it also won't evacuate enough. And you want to have enough water flowing through here to grab the dirt, pull it across these ripples, 
rotating as it goes so it can drop the gold out and get rid of that dirt as fast as it can without losing gold. That's the goal. So it's set up satisfactory. It's got a little bit too much water running through it, but not enough to make any difference. There is a little bit of flexibility in this. It's not happy perfect. You won't really know how it's going to run until you actually drop a scoop of dirt in it, which is what I'm going to do now. So this is a scoop of our classified dirt. You never want to run the big rocks through it without classifying it because those big rocks will come up here and they'll sit in the wrong places to make weird eddies and you'll lose gold that way. So you always have to have your dirt classified. Usually you want about a quarter of an inch to a half inch screen somewhere in that neighborhood depending on what kind of sluice you've got and how fast you want to run it. So you can dump it like this very slowly or you can dump a whole scoop all at once like that. doesn't really matter. What matters is you watch how the dirt goes across here and comes out. So you can see here how we've got a pile of dirt here pile of dirt here, a little bit more down here. This is because we don't have it set up right yet. If we had this set up right, then in the 45 seconds or so that have elapsed, we would have already had all this dirt clear out of here, except a little bit behind each one of the ripples. You notice how there's more dirt on one side than there is on the other. That means we need to tilt it up a little bit more like this to balance out the level that we're going to come back this direction on the next scoop. The reason it's not evacuating that is because we don't have enough flow, we have too much water in here, or because it's not enough slope. I'm going to try lowering the water level by moving it a little bit downstream and blocking up the top end a little bit. So that's going to give me less water coming in, which means that the whole overall water level will be less, which means the current flowing across these riffles will actually be faster. Now, you would never put your finger in here ordinarily because it's going to mess up the current, but I'm going to do it to show you what I'm doing. Right here, this pile of dirt is not getting out of here fast enough. So we need to keep moving this around and raising up the top end. There. See how that, how that acted different? Now all of a sudden we lost quite a bit of our dirt in here. That's the junk dirt. We want to lose it. Now I'm going to try running another scoop through here and see how it runs. Okay, it comes down here. It washes out of here fast. That's nice. It sits on here for a while. We're losing our dirt here. I'd like to see it go a little bit faster, but... It's already gone here nicely. This is good. But now we now we have a little higher angle. Let's try building up our water level a little bit. Do that by blocking some dirt underneath the sluice to force more on top of it. That's actually pretty good. You're seeing some blue around here. That's your miner's moss. This blue is looking really nice. This is, I like to see them all looking like this. This is a little bit heavy, but this is good. So I think, this, I think as we have it set up right now, this will catch gold good. And it'll run through here quickly. So dump it here. It clears off the assay mat. Wait till you see blue in at least a couple of these things before you start running it again. You want to start running it again now because... If you can't see the riffles down there, then they're not working. And you need to be able to see the riffles for them to do you any good. Every one of these riffles has to be visible, and some blue around it has to be visible, or you're not going to be getting the maximum effect out of this sluice. Okay, now I've caught some gold up here in my assay mat, so come over here and look at this. So here you can see, right there, a little spot of gold that got caught in my mat. That means I'm running stuff that has gold in it. And that means that as I'm running my soil through here, I'm going to be catching a lot more downstream. I know that in this light on the camera, it all kind of looks like gold, but trust me, that piece is gold. So now I'm just going to sit here, spread it back and forth like that as I go, so you get some on each side. If your sluice is running a little bit slower, I'll put one scoop, one scoop. And just do it as fast as you can do it, and still keep everything kind of cleared out. Doesn't have to be perfectly clear, but it needs to be able to see that blue, like I mentioned. I have dreams of inventing a self-feeding sluice one day where I can just set a bucket here and have it all suck out. However, I haven't got that perfected yet, but check back the website. I bet one of these days you'll find one. Now, if you do find large nuggets, you know, over half a gram or so, they're not going to be found down here very often. Usually they're going to come right down here where this little depression is in the middle right before it goes up on the ramp and they're going to stop there. They might even camp out back here because, as I mentioned before, and we'll mention again, gold is heavy.
So ironically, in trying to show a situation where the sluice didn't work so well so I could show it here on camera, I actually made it work better than it was working before. Like I said, this isn't my sluice, I borrowed this from a friend. This sluice actually works better with less water. So now we have the water level just at the top of that metal piece that holds the riffles together on the side. And that seems to really work well. I picked this top end almost out of the water, so I've only got maybe a half an inch of water coming into it, and it goes down here. And every time I do it, it pulls the dirt through here nicely, but it cleans behind even the first riffle very well. And that's what you want. You want to see some blue behind these riffles every time, after every scoop. Preferably about half that blue should be visible. So you notice how the dirt comes down here, it fills us up initially, and then it washes away. Now you can see half dirt, half blue, ripple, half dirt, half blue, ripple. And that should clear out in a matter of 15 seconds, maybe a little bit less if you got faster water, or maybe a little bit more, but that should be about your average. If you run much slower than that, you'll be taking all day to run your material through here. And if you run much faster than that, you're going to risk losing some of your material because the gold is going to get sucked right through here before it can actually have a chance to settle. But this is the only way you're ever going to know if your sluice is set up right is how fast it clears and, of course, whether or not you catch gold in it. So watch this and try to make your sluice match that and then you know you got it pretty close to right.